Welcome to our video series on traveling with luggage in Japan. In this video, I'm going to cover taking your luggage with you onto transportation such as trains, buses, or airplanes. In another video, we'll cover shipping your luggage to a hotel or airport using a luggage forwarding service such as Yamato Transport. And in a separate video, we'll cover storing your luggage, whether for a day or longer term. Is it easy to get around Japan with a suitcase? It's common to frequently ride public transportation in Japan, especially if you'll be traveling around from city to city. Because of this, it can be more difficult to travel with a suitcase than it might be in other vacation destinations. While it's not impossible, it's also not always easy to be lugging around a heavy suitcase. For this reason, I recommend packing as light as you can for your Japan trip. I know it's not possible for all of us to pack carry-on only. Some of us will be bringing along a medium or large suitcase. Let's cover things to consider when taking luggage onto trains, buses, or airplane flights. After watching this entire series, you may decide it'd just be easier to ship your suitcase to your destination. Taking suitcases onto Shinkansen bullet trains and express trains. For riding Shinkansen bullet trains, each passenger can carry on up to two pieces of baggage weighing up to 30 kg each, which is 66 pounds. Each bag can have a total dimensions, length plus width plus height of up to 160 centimeters or 62.9 inches. Inside a Shinkansen train is an overhead rack for placing your luggage. In our experience, carry-on size suitcases fit well in the overhead rack, so something that's about 21 or 22 inches. We've also put medium-sized suitcases up there, so around 25 to 26 inches. However, they may hang over the edge a little. We would not recommend putting a super heavy or large suitcase up on the rack as it could fall off and hurt other passengers. There's no door to close like on an airplane. For express trains, such as riding the Thunderbird Express, it's a similar setup. However, the overhead rack may be a bit narrower. If you don't want to lift your suitcase up to that rack, you could keep it down at your feet. Just make sure you're not obstructing the way for other passengers to get on and off the train. Also keep in mind on the ordinary cars, there's some room at your feet, but if you're riding in a green car, green class, there's a footrest, so it won't work as well to put a suitcase at your feet. There's often a small hook where we can put a very lightweight kid's backpack on. When you're riding on a Shinkansen and you hear an announcement that your stop is coming up soon, it's polite to go ahead and gather your belongings, get your suitcases down, and make your way to line up at the door. This way, when the train stops briefly, you're able to quickly get off and allow other passengers to get on. The trains stop for a very short amount of time, so if you're not ready and you're still struggling to get your suitcase down, you could miss getting off at your stop. Personally, we don't bring luggage onto the Shinkansen trains up to that maximum allotment. What we do is we ship to our next destination any medium or large size suitcases, and we only bring onto the bullet train with us carry-on sized bags and our backpacks. Traveling with oversized luggage, special seat reservations. If your suitcase has total dimensions over 160 centimeters up to 250 centimeters, then it is considered oversized luggage. If you're traveling on the Tokaido Sanyo Kyushu Shinkansen with oversized baggage, you will need to reserve a particular seat that comes along with an oversized baggage area located behind the seat or an oversized baggage compartment. You're still allowed two pieces weighing up to 30 kg each, so even oversized luggage has the same weight restriction. Items that are exempt from this oversized rule include most wheelchairs, strollers, musical instruments, and sporting equipment. However, if these are too large, you may have to keep them at your feet or ask an attendant for assistance. If you happen to bring on board oversized luggage without having made the proper type of reservation, then you can be fined a 1,000 yen fine, and the attendant will help you find somewhere to store it. Please note that for other Shinkansen lines, such as Tohoku, which runs from Tokyo to Hokkaido, and the Hokuriku, which runs from Tokyo to Kanazawa, they do not require special seat reservations for oversized luggage. This rule applies specifically to the Tokaido Sanyo Kyushu Shinkansen. The seat reservations for oversized luggage can be made at a JR ticketing office, reserved ticketing machine, and JR 
reservation sites. The easiest method is to visit a JR ticketing office. If you already purchased your Shinkansen tickets online, but now you realize that you need to switch to a reservation that includes oversized baggage, the easiest thing to do is to pick up your train tickets at the station and then visit the JR office. The attendant there can help you to change your reservation based upon availability. Hopefully there's still room on that train. Keep in mind that changing your reservation may incur an additional fee. The number of seats allotted for oversized luggage is limited, so personally I would try to repack in smaller sized suitcases, maybe taking two medium sized suitcases rather than taking one extra large suitcase. How to measure my luggage size. To check whether or not your luggage is oversized, you can measure the height, the width, and the depth of your suitcase, and then add those three together. If it comes within 160 centimeters or less, then you're fine, it's not oversized. For example, let's look at a couple of the suitcases that we've traveled with in Japan. First, this large 29 inch suitcase. So the height is about 75 centimeters. The width is about 47 centimeters and the depth is about 30 centimeters. So then I just need to add those all together. Total for this one is 152 centimeters. So it is not considered oversized. I can bring it onto the Shinkansen without a special reservation. I prefer traveling with a medium sized suitcase in Japan. So somewhere between 24 and 26 inches. This is a 25 inch suitcase. It's about 64 centimeters, 42 centimeters and 26 centimeters. Total dimensions is 132 centimeters, so we could bring both of these onto the Shinkansen. They wouldn't count as oversized baggage, we wouldn't need a special reservation. Just need to keep them each within 30 kg. Luggage on airport trains. If you're taking a special airport train, it's expected that you will have luggage with you. The Narita Express, the Keisei Skyliner, and the Haruka Kansai Airport Express all have luggage racks available. Luggage on non-Shinkansen trains. It can be difficult to bring luggage aboard local or non-Shinkansen trains. Especially at rush hours in the morning and evening, these trains can be very crowded. There may be standing room only with people pressed together like sardines. When we're boarding a local train with luggage, we try to take our luggage right away to a small area between the door and there's sort of a little wall. The most important thing is to make sure your luggage is out of other people's way so they can still easily get on and off the train. There's often a small little overhead rack where you could place a purse, bag, or small backpack. But if you put something up there, make sure you remember to take it when you get off the train. Navigating train stations with luggage. Most train stations are organized in multiple floors, so expect there to be a lot of stairs. There are often also escalators. However, elevators can be a bit more difficult to find. If you're traveling with large heavy suitcases and you'll need to use the elevator, allow yourself extra time at the train station as sometimes you have to go a bit out of your way to use the elevator to get to your platform. If you take the subway or metro, for instance, to get to your accommodation, be aware that some of them do not have elevators. You may be faced with a tall flight of stairs that you need to carry your bags up. When navigating through super crowded train stations, it's polite to keep your luggage upright next to you rather than dragging it behind you. If it's behind you, you can't see where it is and you may trip somebody else. Taking luggage on buses. If you will take an airport limousine bus, they will have luggage storage area under the bus. You can bring up to two suitcases of no more than 120 centimeters height, 60 centimeters width, and 50 centimeters depth, and they can each weigh up to 30 kg. For long distance highway buses, the amount of luggage allowed varies depending on the bus, so please contact the specific one you're planning to book to ask how much luggage you would be able to bring with you. For luggage carried with you onto a bus, you may be expected to keep it on your lap or at your feet. Sometimes there's a very small overhead rack. City buses can be very crowded and they are not a good place to bring luggage. Often when the seats are full, people end up standing in the aisles. There may be a small platform right behind the driver where somebody could set a backpack or a heavy shopping bag, but it's not really meant for a suitcase. We try to bring no more than a tote bag or backpack onto a local city bus. If you'll be taking a bus for a day out sightseeing, you might want to consider leaving your bags in a coin locker for the day. Or if you're going from one point to another, you could use a luggage forwarding system to send your bags ahead to your destination. 
For example, in the spring, we'll spend some time in the Fuji Five Lakes area and then take a bus to Hakone. For that part of our trip, we'll just go ahead and forward our carry-on suitcases to Hakone and take just backpacks with us on the bus. Taking luggage on airplane flights in Japan. It can be convenient to fly from one city to another within Japan. For instance, on our upcoming winter trip, we will fly from Tokyo up to Sapporo, Japan. When taking a flight within Japan, it's important to keep in mind that there will be not only size, but also weight restrictions for your bags. For example, the carry-on baggage allowance for domestic flights for both Japan Airlines and All Nippon Airways is that you can bring on a personal item and a carry-on, however, the combined weight of those two items must not exceed 10 kg or 22 pounds. If you flew to Japan from somewhere like the USA that doesn't weigh carry-on bags, then you may want to weigh your bag before heading to a domestic flight within Japan because if your bag is overweight, you may not be able to treat that as a carry-on. You may have to check it in. Low-cost carriers like Peach Airlines are even more restrictive. Peach also allows you to bring a personal item and a carry-on. However, the combined weight of those two can be up to 7 kg, which is 15.4 pounds. And yes, from our experience, they did weigh our bags and they made us rearrange, juggle things around until each person's allotment was within the 7 kg. So do expect them to be weighed. Low-cost carriers may charge you to check in a bag on a flight within Japan. For instance, for Peach Aviation, the fee starts at 1,950 yen per checked bag. Jetstar has a checked bag fee chart that starts at 3,600 yen for 15 kg bag, and then the fees go up quickly from there. Rather than paying to check in a bag for a flight within Japan, it might make more sense to use a luggage forwarding service and send your suitcase directly to your hotel. This way, you don't have to bother with getting your suitcase to the airport and then from the airport to your accommodation. Plus with the low cost of using these luggage forwarding services, it might come out about the same as paying to check the bag. More on this topic in our next video where we will take a deep dive into traveling hands-free in Japan. Taking suitcases and taxis. A taxi can be a convenient way to get directly to your hotel, or perhaps you want to get to a major train station to get onto a Shinkansen train and you'd rather not take a couple local trains to get there. We've been taking taxis more and more recently. They can be expensive for long distances, but sometimes it's reasonable if you're just going a short distance. Taxis in Japan usually have a large trunk space. We've had no problem fitting carry-on luggage for a family of five into a regular taxi. On one of our trips to Japan, our hotel helped us arrange a van taxi to the airport. At that point, we were still traveling full-time, so we had all of our belongings with us, multiple suitcases, they were able to fit into a van taxi. Let us know if you have any more questions about taking luggage onto transportation in Japan. Up next, we'll be explaining more about how you can ship your luggage to a hotel or airport. And stay tuned for our video on storing your luggage short or long-term in Japan. Please subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration.